All right. Good evening, everybody. Morning, wherever you're at around the world. Um, let's do an audio and visual check. Can you guys hear and see everything? Welcome. It was an interesting day, to say the least. Um, yeah, let, let's let's wait till I, I make sure you guys could hear me okay. While I get a few things set up from my end. You're good. You're good. You can hear me. Sound good. Picks are good. <laughs> I am freaking tired. <laughs> I really am. I, I debated. I was like, I was really just rushing to get to my computer desk. Um, I, I didn't really sleep that good. And I woke up super early this morning and then I couldn't get back to sleep. And I'm very tired. Um, allergies. You know, it's spring here in Utah and my allergies have been killing me. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just that time of year. Yeah. Super. Yeah. My eyes, you can see, I, I woke up from a nap, like a five minute power nap. I, I took a shower out of the shower. I went and I just went straight and laid down on my bed. And then uh, like, I, I literally woke up five minutes before this class started and then ran around and hurry and set up my computer. And I said, well, I, I need to hurry and get this. Um, <laughs> it looks that bad, huh, Sin and Mark? Yeah, it feels like it. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I am going to be really slow and not as energetic tonight. Um, as always, I am Coach Dakota, Coach DBA. There's our top step risk disclosure. You can see it. we have the live markets behind me. Anything I say is for educational purposes only. And if you guys, you guys, we all have our own free will, right? We could all click the button whether we want to buy or sell. Um, no blaming anybody else. We have our own agency. Um, let's dive into it, and then we'll talk about we'll talk about the different markets. Then I'll answer some questions. So hold off on some of these questions. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. We have some amazing moderators here at Top Step who will be feeding me my questions that I miss. And if I do miss it, just copy and paste it. Um, like I said, welcome everybody. Glad to have you guys. Um, Gulf Coast Pest Control, um, new subscriber here. Welcome. Hope you, hopefully you enjoy tonight. I'm a little bit slow because I'm uh, just not feeling well with allergies and and what not. But just because I'm slow doesn't mean the market will be. You can see I have the NASDAQ. Uh, we're going to be talking about the NASDAQ, crude oil, Nikkei, and gold. I have the NASDAQ here in front of you. Um, this is a daily chart on the NASDAQ. And sure enough, I, I don't want to say as expected, but really close to what I was looking for today. Uh, we had news come out. We have the FOMC minutes. And sure enough, it was a really red, ugly day. Uh, you know, we were up here, as you can see, we went from basically what's what was the high? The the high was 474 down to the low at, you know, 18,053. So about 420 points from a height from the high to the low. Um, I was kind of looking for us to break these lows. Uh, I'm not going to be I'm not going to lie that that this is kind of what I was looking for us is to break down and head below 18,000 and maybe see 17,800s, 17,900s. Somewhere in here is what I was looking for off that hot CPI print. Um, you guys know because I've I've been saying this for a little bit now. Uh, people are really optimistic about the markets. Um, they haven't really been listening to what the Fed has been saying. You know, higher for longer. That's been this. That's been like the what do we want to call it? The the theme for a while now. And we've been getting hot inflation data and the Fed has continued to say higher for longer. And now people are starting to realize, guess what? We might actually be higher for longer. <laughs> and we're starting to see the market react. Um, so just based off this price, ac price action, you can see we're starting to increase volatil volatility. It seems like the slow... A slow increase, right? We are continuing to make lower highs over here on the daily, and we're going, you know, what do we want to call this? I don't know. This is an interesting pattern. 
But however, we are increasing volatility, which is great for us as day traders. The, the more volatility, the more opportunities there is for us to make money. Uh, I finished the day around, um, I don't know where I finished today around. Here's my XFAs that I started on the 9th. So I started these yesterday. So I'm sitting around, I, I, I made 4,500 in each of these. So that's 9,000. And then I made another 4,500 in my live account. So I'm around 12,000 today um, or yesterday during, or whatever we want to call it during the New York session today. Um, it was good. I was short the market. I was shorting the NASDAQ. I mean, uh, before the, the print, after the print, uh, all that fun stuff. So as we go, like I said, I'm going to skim through all these markets. We could go through them together and then I'm going to go back to the NASDAQ and further do my analysis because I'm a trader and I want to see what markets are moving. Um, some people are saying gold. Let's take a look at gold for a moment. Um, gold starting to rally. That gold short from last night worked out really well. Um, we did get that trade and then we had a pullback and we even had more of more a bigger sell off in gold. Um, let's take a look at Nikkei. Nikkei is starting to rally. This is the Japanese market. Nikkei is in an interesting position here. Um, Man, I, I am tempted to, to take a short on Nikkei. Then let's take a look at crude oil, and then we will start back with our scheduled analysis on the NASDAQ. Okay, here's crude. Yeah, I think I'm ready. Let's jump into it. There's NASDAQ on the daily. Um, we did not break these lows. I was expecting, I was looking for us to break the lows. We did not. Um, if we zoom into the 60 minute, we can start to zoom in and granulize what the markets are looking at, uh, what can we expect going into tonight and tomorrow. I think we even have more news coming out tomorrow. Let's see. Is it PPI tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow's Thursday. Yeah, we have core PPI month over month and PPI month over month. So that's, uh, we also have unemployment claims and we have an ecb press conference fomc some a couple fomc speakers uh 30-year bond auction uh tomorrow is uh, another jam-packed day so we should see more volatility tomorrow it should be a fun one um could this be the volatility tomorrow uh, from all the inflation and speakers that maybe is the what do they call it the the sand that breaks the camel's back or the hay or whatever that saying is i really think that we could break down through these lows since march i, I don't know if we could just have a huge sell-off i don't know what the pullback is or what we're looking at this is the hourly chart and we're still in this consolidation zone um essentially the up at these highs around 18,500s, all the way down to the lows, you know, 18,100s to 18,050, right? So, yeah, the straw, the straw. Come on, give me a break. Everybody knows <laughs> the straw that broke the camel's back. There we go. That's that's the saying, right? So, here we are. We're pushing these lows again. Um, there's a lot of fear in the markets. Like I said, talking about interest rates higher for longer. We have um, PPI tomorrow. We have a lot of the FOMC members speaking, and I think it's going to be a lot more of the same. Like, uh, we're going to pause holding rates. You know, maybe we're going to push out cutting rates until fall. I don't know. Um, I, I think this is going to be good enough for a catalyst to possibly have a further sell off um, below 18,000 is what I'm going to be looking at. Uh, until then, we're kind of in the middle, right? As we start to zoom in, uh, it's very obvious to see that huge sell-off today during the news. And we didn't really go anywhere after that, right? Um, I, I, what do you do in, in this type of a market? Like, how do you trade this market? This is a difficult one, uh, to be honest, guys. I mean, it feels like the market just does not know what to do either. We, we had... The huge sell-off, we finally broke this range from the past few days, um, and we're kind of starting a new one, right? 
So I don't know what tonight's going to be looking at. Um, I I have the same feeling. I have the same feeling tonight as I did yesterday here in the Nasdaq. Is I might as well just wait. Um, we either break up above this and we come right back up and test these highs in the eighteen thousand, maybe four hundred again. So if we break up, very likely that we could come up and see eighteen thousand four hundred. That is a possibility that I'm going to be looking for. If we sell off, then of course, I'm going to be starting to look at over here on the left-hand side. I'm going to start looking for these lows around 17,800. You can see there, oh, this is behind me. So these are the two areas that I'm going to be looking at. There's a lot of support. So essentially for me, if we sell off and start breaking these lows, we could possibly see 17,800 zone. That's what I'm gonna be looking at if we do sell off tomorrow. Um, if we do start to rally, then immediately I'm gonna be looking for this 18,400 level. level. So essentially, we just go back up into this consolidation that we've been in all week and, and go up and test the highs. Um, or we just wait, right, Richard Harris? That, that, that probably is the right decision. Um, I'm not trading this. I don't see a, a good enough trade setup for me going in tonight to tonight. Uh, and I don't feel confident in any of this price action. Um, yeah, I mean, it's barcoding, right? Like there was a barcoding the last all week. Uh, we had the sell off and guess what? All day today, it's just been barcoding. And if we zoom into the five minute chart, I only took one trade. I took one trade today and, and that was it. Um, actually, I lied, two trades and I was essentially doing the same thing. I sold at 190s and I was buying at 140s. Um, this morning I did have a, a little bit more accurate of a trade. I sold, I think at like 190 right here and then I bought it back at like 115. I, I don't know, I'll have to, let me, let me see. I, Oh, this is my combo. Oh, these are my XFAs. I'll have to switch to a live account. Um, but yeah, let's get to some questions and then we'll move over to, let's touch base on Nikkei. Nikkei's, we have a little bit more movement on the Nikkei. Um, let me look at gold. So go ahead and get your question in. And let's see. Um, Coach Dakota, do you, you, do you use stops at the Goldman interns? Don't hunt them down. I mean, the Goldman interns is just a fun joke, right? Um, markets like to hunt for stops, find areas of liquidity to go. The The fun joke is Goldman interns. It's it's not a true thing. So, so I want to make sure that's clear. It's just a fun thing for Top Step TV, right? Um, uh, me neither lens it opens looks like a bear flag, but you never know. Can you explain why you entered those two NASDAQ trades? Um, yeah, let's go over that real quick because you know, I like to review trades and um, I think it's a good thing for you guys to see um, and talk about because NASDAQ has been really good to me. Um, this was it. Okay, so I'm gonna go over my NASDAQ trade Let's see. So we had the huge sell off. Okay. And it was up here. I, I don't want to switch to my live account because it takes some time to switch to live. So essentially it was this move. This was a pullback. It was right here. I got triggered in at 190. I mean, I have a 100 tick chart on the side of this, but we had a nice rally right around 190 is where I actually shorted. Um, yeah, 190 was a short. It, it was an, a really great trade. There was some resistance here. If you zoom in, um, 190, there was some resistance. Um, 190, we started to hesitate. This was just a very, very basic, you know, guess what? We sold off, we are getting a pullback, and I'm looking for a continuation. So I shorted 190. My stop loss was like 215, 220. I'll have to go in and double check. And then I closed out, I was in three contracts. I closed out two of the contracts at 115, and then I got stopped out for break even on the last contract. So that was the main trade this morning. Um, and then it was just chop. There was a lot of chop. I, I didn't trade. 
And then the other trade I did have, let me see, make sure. It was right around, it was after noon. It was after the news or after FOMC minutes. Um, we rallied up and then as soon as the minutes released, we did break down, let me show you. So we broke down, this is a five minute chart. As soon as we started to break down, it was just a quick in and out trade for 15 points. Um, it wasn't great trading. I mean, it's just a mess in consolidation. Essentially, somebody like Doby, this could have been really great for the way that Doby trades, and that's consolidating, right? Every time we come down to these lows, I mean, essentially it's, what was it? If you bought 128 and sold like 190s, you made a lot of money today, right? That was the that was the trade all day. Um, buy 120s, 130s, sell 190s, 200s, and, and just range trade all day. So this is the way I know, I believe Doby likes to trade. Um, that is the way that you make money in a market like this. But then the question is, how do you know if the market's gonna be like this? It's just, you don't, right? It's it's easy to point out after the fact, but you just never know what the market's gonna do. I was expecting a continuation to the downside. So all the trades that I was taking today was just selling, um, which worked out really well. Um, it just, I didn't get any follow through or continuation and it wasn't great for a trader like me. Um, yeah. Okay, um, I'm good finding, okay, so here's a few more questions and then we'll move on to the next market. Um, let me see if anything else is moving too much. So, okay, next question. I'm good at finding levels, but how do I identify that my levels are accepted for long or rejected for short? Do you want for two to three, five minute candles, close for confirmation? Um, yeah, that's the question, right? So. Uh, essentially, guys, the question that I am understanding is if we're good at identifying levels, how do we know when the levels reverse or like how, what validates those levels? And for me, it's very basic technical analysis. Um, essentially, I think I seen one right here. This is the Nikkei. This is the, the Japanese market. Um, this was resistance, right? We have a lot of resistance here. You know, this showed up as support. We rallied up here and we had a three bar reversal. And that's kind of the name of the game, right? We never know until after the fact whether we break up and we rally above this level or we sell off and we get confirmation that we, we have a reversal. Uh, that's part of the risk, right? Because if we knew, then trading would be easy. Um, it's the fact of the matter is we try and find something in terms of, for me, it's technical analysis that will trigger me into a short. Um, for example, I like three bar reversals, like, and that is a, one of the most simplest technical analysis, um, and like chart patterns, three bar reversal. All that is, is pretty much this, what you see in this circle is a three bar reversal. Uh, we, the market's going up, it's trending. We have one candle right here. And as soon as we cross below it, um, that could signal that we can continue down. Um, it's not guaranteed because that's like anything in the market. It's not, it's not guaranteed, right? Um, I am new to Nikkei. Okay, Nikkei is what we're talking about right now. What is the best time to trade? Um, I get this question every single night. Um, I like to trade the Nikkei right now because the Asian market is open and Nikkei is J Japan. And this is when we get a lot of volatility here in the Nikkei. Um, Sean D's, what time frame do I trade the chart for the three bar reversal? Um, I trade it on every time frame. Like it will work on a five minute, one minute, one hour chart. And it depends on what time of day I am trading. For example, um, if I'm trading my slow markets class like tonight, you guys see where I look at the one hour chart. Um, for example, here's gold. Uh, this is a one hour chart on gold. And everybody's seen that I was taking a three bar reversal short. Um, it worked out well. Um, during the New York session, I will trade a five minute chart, right? And, and I perfectly fine trading three bar reversals on a five minute chart. Um, now we go, 
we're going to continue to talk about Nikkei, this is the Japanese market, is this is a 100 tick chart. There's a three bar reversal on a 100 tick chart. And that short looks like it worked out really well. I missed this trade. Dang it. Okay, let, let's move. We're gonna, I'm going to continue to do some analysis on Nikkei and try and answer some questions um, for this. But yeah, I, I think that was the play. I think short right there was the play. Um, I missed it, unfortunately. Um, there's a lot of downward pressure. Um, you can see we've been selling off here on the Nikkei. And we rallied. I mean, sure enough, we did just rally up to these highs and uh, reverse and sold off, right? I'm actually, let me let me zoom in. I'm going to zoom in to a five-minute chart. Let me make sure I have everything set up on my end. 103. New tool. I'm just getting something set up on my end. Okay, I'm good. We're, we're still selling off over here on Nikkei. That is interesting. Okay, so I, I am I am actually a little bit tempted to take a long here on the Nikkei. Here's why. I'm a little tempted. Let, let's see. Hmm. I'm going to try to get in long here and let me let me explain this. Let me explain what I'm looking at. Okay, guys. So this was I, I did say that was a valid short. Okay. Um, however, I, I think that this is a this is an opportunity to get in long. If it will fill me, this is this is in my two combines that I've been trading these two combines right here. So essentially what I'm looking at right now is we just opened up, we started to rally, we broke, we pretty much broke most of this New York session right here. We broke up above, we rallied, and I'm actually kind of looking at this as just a pullback. Like we're pulling back, this is an area that this was resistance and you know this res resistance can have an opportunity to become support um, and if it does become support i want to get in long just one contract um, this is not a really huge position um, and it might not even fill me now that i'm looking at it We'll see. We'll see if it can. We're just kind of consolidating around here. This is a small time. This is a five minute time frame and it just started. We might see a deeper pullback. Um, I'm not sure. This is the first thing that I'm looking at. Um, in terms of anything tonight, just uh, and then my target. Yeah, let's, let's, I'm, I'm just looking at. Am I going to miss this? Let's see. Yeah, where would be my stop? Immediately, what I see is my stop loss right there. To me, that looks like a decent place for a stop loss um, because we have a pivot here and we see some support um, right around 230. And you guys can see if I zoom this in really well, you can see what I'm referring to. Whereas if we do break this, um, Maybe we see some, you know, that would be a decent stop loss. Um, the next one, this is a little bit too loose. If I had my stop loss all the way down here, like 110, I'm, I'd be risking a little bit too much. We will see. Actually, you know, I think maybe right there. Let's see how this plays out. I got filled. I'm in long two contracts on the Nikkei with my two express funded accounts, just one contract. We're gonna see if I could get, we could get a bounce back up to this session. I consider this a new session because we did close and open up essentially 
right here, right? And this is the high of the session during the Asian, during the slow markets class tonight, new trading day. Let's see if we could push up back to these highs of 400 and let's look at some targets. Uh, sometimes this is the disadvantage. Okay, I, I wanna talk about the advantage and disadvantage of multiple contracts, right? So disadvantage of only getting into one contract and the Nikkei not having micros is the fact that I have to choose one take profit and I cannot scale out. So essentially, I have to choose where to close my trade at and wherever I choose, I have to get out of 100% of my position. So essentially what that means is if I believe we could rally up here and I and it, it does, I have to close out of 100% of my position. Um, it does not give me the opportunity to, you know, maybe get into, if I got into two contracts, then I could close off half and then let the other half run if we do get a nice runner. So that's the downside of just getting into one contract. Um, the positive side is you're not risking as much, right? Yeah, there's no micros for, for Nikkei. If this was micros, uh, I would probably get in five micros. That, that probably would make sense to me a little bit. I'm gonna keep my take profit up here. Um, we'll see. This is actually not up here. Maybe, yeah, I'm gonna keep my take profit up here. Here are some areas that I'm looking at. If we do start to rally and if we break up, uh, most likely I might close my trade just for you know some profit. This area and this area is what I'm looking at, right? Um, whether I have my my profit here, this this one's looking a little bit more tempting to me. I, I I'm a little indecisive, I, I think, on where to put my take profit because it's not too clear over the past week. Let's just see. Let's just see where this one goes. Um, yeah, so I think that's good enough for now. You guys know my uh, bias on Nikkei, obviously. Um, at what point would you trail your stop, if at all, right? So this is an example of where if I was, if the market was just to go sideways, uh, I would leave this trade overnight. This is a trade that I will leave overnight um, if the market doesn't do anything, okay? So I would go to bed, I would turn my computer off, and this trade is either gonna you know, sell off and I would take this exact amount of loss or we're gonna rally and it's gonna hit my take profit. So this is, I'm perfectly comfortable leaving this trade overnight. And if between now and when I go to bed or whenever I turn my computer off, if the market does start to say move up a little bit, then I am okay with moving my stop loss up. So for example, you know, if we do start to rally and show some buyers stepping in, which we kind of are, um, I'm okay with moving my stop loss maybe to here. So I just cut off some of my risk. Um, I'm basically have a three to one risk reward trade. Yeah, this is now a three to one risk reward. Um, the way it sits right now, I mean, pretty close, right? I, I didn't do the math, but it, this is this is as good as it gets when it comes to me guessing. Um, just eyeball, right? This is one risk and I'm looking to make three of those units, right? Very basic, very simple. It's not rocket science. I'm just eyeballing it. Um, three to one risk reward based off of this one. Um, this has a potential to, you know, if we do keep, if we do rally, then I will move my stop loss maybe to here. And it's actually making a good pivot right? I mean, it looks like it just filled me, right? It, it filled, like I was the bottom of that, that little pivot. Then I could just move my stop loss to right there. That That's actually not too bad of a, a stop loss. And we could even zoom in and I could show you guys, like, how's that for a, an entry, um, right? <laughs> and, and these are on my two XFAs. So I would be fine with having, keeping my stop loss here. Um, and if we continue to rally, I would be okay with moving my stop loss to here. And if we continue to push before I go to bed, then that would be probably the best place for my stop loss. I'm, I'm risking one tick to make, 
you know, X amount of dollars. So we're going to watch this. Let's see how it plays out tonight during class. Um, and I honestly, like I said, I'm tired. Uh, I'm struggling with my allergies. So at the end of this class, I'm going to turn my computer off. So what, wherever I end for class, I will turn my computer off and I'll show you guys exactly how I leave my trades um, because there wouldn't be anything happening, right? After class, if my computer's turned off, nothing happens. So <sighs> yeah, that being said, um, man, a lot of questions going on here. I'm gonna get to a couple more questions and then we'll move on to, let's say gold and then we'll finish it off with crude oil and we'll keep checking back with this trade, right? So you guys get to see what's Dakota's strategy? How do how does Dakota trade? How did Dakota make it to number one on the leaderboard? Well, this is exactly how. I'm, I'm showing you the exact way I trade my live account, my Express Funded account. It, it's the same thing, guys. Um, I mean, it's DK could have just, just as much, you know, kept going down and stopped me out versus you know, turn around exactly where, <laughs> exactly where I entered. Right. I, that, that was an interesting thing. If this rallies, this is Yeah. This does not happen very often where it comes down. It fills me at the exact bottom tick of that pullback and then it rallies. Um, yeah. <laughs> Nikkei is a paid actor. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that's interesting. Um, Based on what you set your stop loss, the next support is, okay, so I think I answered that one. How much do you risk per trade? Is it set for every trade or market structure? So this is a good question, guys. I get this a lot. Uh, I've answered it a few times, but I'm okay with answering it again because risk management is number one in my in my books when it comes to trading, is how much do I risk per trade? Um, it, it depends on where the support and resistance is. And it depends on my, you know, what account I'm trading. For example, if I'm trading a 150K account, uh, I typically do not like to risk more than a quarter percent. A quarter percent of a 150K account is $375. And I do not like to risk more than $375 per trade. Um, it's 100% a personal preference. And yeah, that's about it. And so if this is $350, which it, pretty closely is because I've been trading for a while and I could kind of eyeball it. Um, if this was another one, say if my stop loss was say here, then I could get into three contracts and my risk would still be 375. So 375 could be the same, whether it's one contract or five contracts, just depending on where your stop loss and where your take are, or how big your position is. Um, Richard Harris, I thought you risked $1,200. It depends on the count, right? Because if I'm copy trading, if I am using a different strategy in terms of per contract, right now in my live account, it's a $100,000 account, um, but I am trading it really aggressive. I have a $9,000 daily loss limit. I have a 30 contract max position size. So I, I'm opened up in my live account. Um, I'm going for it. You guys could see that by obviously the leaderboard where, you know, yesterday I made, the day before that I made like 14,000. Um, today during the New York session, I made like 13,000. So I'm trading that pretty aggressive um, on these slow market trades um, where I'm gonna be sleeping. Yeah, typically 300 or $375. Um, it is what I like to risk. Um, can you tell us your other strategies? I mean, this is the strategy. It, I mean, the only thing that I do that's different um, is the time frame and, and my risk parameters. The The way I get in and the way I get out is exactly the same thing. Um, LAFTA, did Top Step give you $100,000? No. No, nope. Top Step did not give me anything, guys. Uh, I, I am doing this coaching um, just because I really enjoy coaching. It, it really is. I started, um, I joined Top Step's Discord in July when they moved to the one step, one rule. And I've loved to help traders. Uh, I, I did work as a coach at a different prop firm 
like when I was 19 uh, at an old prop firm called Apiary Fund. Um, I was 19 years old and I was trading Forex and I was helping uh, develop strategies. And I've really started to like this. And I seen that there's a lot of traders who do not know how to trade slow markets. So I started doing that and I started talking to Top Step and they're like, hey, you know, do you want to come help be a coach? And I'm like, sure, you know what? And I didn't really even care about trading at Top Step um, in, until I'm like, you know what? I, I need, I, I kind of want to show um, everybody what's possible. I'm like, hey, let, let's, let's try and um, let's see where I could go with this, right? We have the Top Step Trading League. I open up a few combine accounts. I, I yeah, and, and and the rest is history. Everything you guys see, I 100% did it. Um, you got, I went through this in slow markets. Every single day, you see me placing these trades in slow markets. You see me talking through these trades. Um, it's 100% real. You know that's one reason why I love Top Step is. They call me out. They call me out on everything. Um, whenever I hit a daily loss limit or I have a bad day, Mick is 100% there. You know, hey, Coach Dakota, you know, he hit his daily loss limit. Um, he was up money and he gave it back and they straight up call me out. <laughs> Sometimes it sucks because now I'm, I've been on the leaderboard for a few months. I mean, since the beginning of the year, basically. Um, and... Everything I do is magnified because we have all you guys watching what I do, um, seeing where I'm at on the leaderboard, and I have everybody behind the scenes on Top Step watching what I do. Um, so that's been an interesting journey where every little trade I place, um, thousands of traders see it. Um, I have the pressure of that. And on top of that, I have all the Top Step team behind me um, doing that as well, right? So this is 100% in front of you guys. It's 100% live. Um, yeah, and I hope I could teach by doing. Does that, what is it I want? Because everybody learns at their own pace and everybody learns differently, right? You know, some learn by do, like seeing how it's done. Some learn by just reading how it's done. Um, there's so many different ways to teach and to learn. I'm not the best teacher. I'm really not. I, I, I have never taken a, a course on how to teach. I, I, I'm not a teacher. Um, I'm just a trader trying to help other traders become consistent and hopefully make a difference. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm a much better trader than I am a, a teacher. That's for sure. Dang, the, we are starting to just hesitate right here. I'm going to watch this. I would be perfectly okay with this. Mick cuts his steak with a spoon to minimize risk. <laughs> That's a good one. That is a good one. Um, Eric M, I traded with Apiary a few, for a few years, had a great experience with them. Yeah, Eric Apiary was a great environment. Um, the co the the owner Sean Lucas, he was great. I loved him here in Utah. Uh, it, it, I mean, it they were amazing in, in terms of the people. Um, Top Step is just head and shoulders better. Um, futures is, is so much better. That's why I love futures. Um, so yeah, wit. Hey, Dakota, first time on live. I'm not sure what you mean by that. We're sitting here. I'm watching Nikkei. I've been answering questions and watching Nikkei. In just a moment, I will jump over to um, maybe gold and crude oil. I'm just really interested to see what this Nikkei trade does. And it's probably really nice for you guys to see me um, in this trade. Win or lose, I don't really mind. Um, hopefully, we could just break through this and rally up into the 400s. Um, and, and make a lot of money. What ticker symbol is Nikkei? Ticker symbol NKD, and I believe it's in the top step X as well. Can you explain false candle signals and signal confirmation? Um, Envy, I, I don't really pay too much attention to false candle signals or signal... I mean, chart patterns and technical analysis, right, is, is the same regardless of what time frame. And... Um, 
depending on your own individual strategy. Yes, it's now on top step. How does gold? Okay, we're starting to push. I, I want to see us break above this. Um, I want to see you guys. I want to show you guys how I manage this trade from start to finish. I I've decided we're going to watch the Nikkei, and I'm going to show you guys how I manage this trade start to finish. Um, yeah, let's see it. Let's see it. China CPI just came in. Um, I must have just missed that. Thoughts on gold? Okay, let's take a look at gold while this trade plays out. Let me know, guys, in the chat if Nikkei does start to move up or down. Let me know. I'll switch back to it. But let's start talking about gold for a minute. Um, gold hasn't done anything um, since I've been talking. But let's look at a, a higher time frame first. We got that pullback I was looking for um, down to 2350s. Um, this was the pullback I was looking for. This is what I wanted. I didn't take advantage 100% of it because I wasn't trading gold today and I was not holding a gold trade going into the crazy news that was today. But we got this pullback. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how we react. Um, is it going to be something like this where we just pull back and then immediately just continue the rally? You know, pull back and do we just immediately continue the rally up to 2400? I don't know. Um, let's zoom into a 60 minute chart and I will go further in depth. Like I said, I've only been trading gold for the past few weeks. Um, I used to be a gold trader. Uh, I stopped trading gold and started focusing on the Nikkei. Um, but I'm starting to get back into it. Uh, the first thing I'm noticing is we have a lot of support here and we sold off and now we're starting to find support again. So yeah, this could be a very, very simple, a very simple buy the dip strategy, right? Where every one of these dips, we're making, you know, higher low, higher low, you know, is this another higher low? Are we going to continue to see gold to rally and follow this beautiful trend line? Um, possibly, right? This is something that I'm going to watch. I'm not going to trade this. I'm going to watch it. Like I said, I am just starting to trade gold. I'm relatively new to gold um, since a f pretty much six months ago. And I don't want to be trading everything. I, I want to take trades that I am comfortable with, that has a higher risk reward. Uh, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to be talking about it um, pretty much every single night during my slow markets class. But yeah, I'm looking at this as just buy the dip, right? There's no signal and I'm not seeing anything that I can tell that saying gold needs to slow down um, in terms of a reason to sell it. Um, I, I think this could be just another buy the dip opportunity with everything that's going on with interest rates, everything that's going on in the market. We could very well see a, a continued leg higher. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to watch. I'm going to see how gold reacts. Um, if we do rally up, I'm okay with missing it. We don't have to make every single trade and take every single trade. Maybe we just consolidate, right? Maybe we see a consolidation pattern where we just come up. And to be honest, this is probably a little bit more likely to happen. Um, something like this, just consolidation where we come up and then we sell off. So I, I actually think that this is a little more this is a little more probable instead of going and breaking and making more highs. I think something like this is a little more probable. I'm gonna watch to see how gold is. Um, we're gonna talk about this tomorrow night. See what happens with gold. I'll I'll we'll keep an update. But as of right now, I don't see any trades on gold. Uh, I'm not gonna be taking any trades on the Nasdaq until after what's going on tomorrow. Um, I am going to be on Top Step TV tomorrow during Power Hour, and I believe. Um, ooh, let's let's look. Am I going to join um, during Fast Markets? Let's see. I, I might be on Top Step TV for Fast Markets too. I accepted a. I accepted an invitation for a Fast Markets. Yeah, it's Friday. Friday Fast Markets. That's going to be an interesting one. So that one of my, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Then I can show you guys how I trade uh, fast markets. Let's take a look at the Nikkei. 
we're kind of still just kind of not going anywhere. Um, but we are going up, right? So that's, that is positive. Let's go here. Okay, get to some more questions and then we will go to oil next. Um, um, he says gold, I hear go. Gold? <laughs> we will be there with you. Yeah, so if, you, if you're if you able to make it Friday morning for fast markets, um, great. I would much prefer you guys here during slow markets because I'm in a competition with fast markets. Um, I'm always in a competition. Um, your graphic is too clean. Do you have any other indicator or signal in another? No, this is it. I, I do not have any other signal or indicator um, here. This is the graphic. I, I go through this every night, Monday through Thursday on slow markets. Um, these are naked charts. It, it's very basic and very simple price action. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is clean. I like it clean. Um, I probably annoy some people with me um, drawing support and resistance, and then I take a moment and just delete everything because it's a pet peeve of mine to have um, stuff on my charts because I'm just used to watching this. Um, I've been watching and trading markets for a while now, and the simpler I can make it on myself, the simpler it is, right? You guys, no, I don't use VWAP. You guys seen my reasoning for entering here, right? Um, let me know if you have any questions on why I'm even in this trade. It was as simple as it gets. It, it really does. Um, let's see. Yeah, we're starting to break up now um, on this. Look, yeah, so it's nice to be able to do this in front of you guys live. That, that, this is a nice trade. It sounds like I'm saying that every single night now. I, I've been, market's been treating me good. It really has. Even though it's been a little bit choppy or messy, it seems like every single night I've been saying, oh, this was a nice trade. Like, oh, that doesn't work out exactly like that every single time. Um, the markets has just been good. The, I've been trading pretty good. Um, basic, simple, and resistance, right? Richard Harris. Dakota, do you go through an indicator phase when you first started trading? Yes, Richard Harris, you know exactly. I, and I know exactly what you're talking about, Richard. Um, and I think everybody kind of goes through that where everyone tries these different indicators and tries to add like a VWAP, a moving average. Oh, you know, these channels, maybe the Bollinger Bands. And they go through like all these indicators, trying to find which ones they want, which ones they like, which ones is better for them, or which ones like the golden goose, you know, you, whatever it is. And sometimes it does work out for people. I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes indicators are really good for some traders. Um, for me, I went through that same thing, right? I, I tried to find which indicators are best, which, in, and I went through them all. I, I've tried so many different strategies and so many different indicators. Um, yeah, yeah, I've went through that phase. Yeah. The Ichimoku. Yeah. Yep. I liked, I liked, uh, I like the Bollinger Bands. I like standard deviations. Um, I, I still look at the Fibonacci levels and all that. So yeah, this trade is looking good. Um, like I said, I copied this between two, both my XFA accounts. Um, Let's see if we get a break. We're testing. We're right around um, 390, 395. It's, and let's watch. If we get a break, sometimes the Nikkei could could rally. Um, and, and you guys will see this. Um, sometimes when we break, it breaks pretty dang hard. And um, it, it can be clean. It can be. Not all the times. There's a possibility that, you know, the Nikkei can break clean. So we'll, we'll see what, here we go. We're testing 400. The high of the session is 405. Um, let me see if I, can I pull up a DOM? Let's see here. We can watch this together. Let's see. I'm gonna make it so you guys could see this a bit better. Okay, let's see, always on top. Can you guys see this okay? 
yeah, we'll watch this. Um, 405 is the session high. That's what I'm going to be looking. You can see this is a thin order book too. This order book's really thin. Uh, and that's what we mean by not a lot of liquidity and the order book being thin is that's this is what we mean. Let me adjust that a little bit better. 24. Let's take a look at maybe maybe 21. There you go. And I could probably hmm, trying to adjust this so it looks better for everybody and myself. while we watch it. Okay, whatever. That works. Okay. We'll watch it. Um we'll see how we'll see how this goes. I don't know how far. Um Hmm. Yeah, this is a very thin order book, right guys? You could tell that there was a difference. And I and you said Austin, there I took no heat on this trade. <laughs> I literally got in at, at, it ticked me in. Usually it ticks me out, right? <laughs> yeah, this is a very thin order book, guys. Watch, like I could show you how thin it is. Watch this. Let me, you, you can see this, this is my live account. Um, I'll show you how thin this order book is. Okay, you see that? So look, watch, watch the price. Do you see this price at four ninety five? I just put thirty contracts in it. Um, 95. I'll switch it to 500 and 505. So watch. 500, 505, 590. Yeah, so you could see my order right there of 30 contracts moving. So that it's a <laughs> Yeah, so there is something to be said and then there's that's my live account. So you know much that's true when my live orders go to the market and you can see on the order books. Oh, we're we're kind of hesitating here to to be yeah, let me make sure. I, I don't want to be short. Um, I don't want to be short the market. I'm not going to try and manipulate the market. I, I I hear where maybe I could put my, you know, this is a thin order book. You know, do I put my 30 contracts to sell right here? I'd, let's not talk about spoofing, guys. I'm not going to try and spoof the markets. Um, let's go. Let's go ahead and answer some more questions while, while we watch this. Um, it, it's a thin order book. You never know what could happen, right? But we're kind of hesitating. I was kind of hoping that we would get a breakout and we could watch that break live. But markets are slow. This is slow markets for a reason, right? Okay, let's get to some of these questions that I have piled up uh, by my side. What's the difference between a 100 tick chart and a time frame chart? Um, the time frame tar chart obviously takes into consideration time. You know, it's an increment and measurement of time for every five minutes. Where did price go? Um, a 100 tick chart is exactly what it is. Every 100 ticks um, is a candlestick. If it rallies, would you consider adding another contract and leaving a runner? Um, if we're talking about the Nikkei, no. If the Nikkei rallies, uh, I, I think I'm just going to close it out. Um, we have news tomorrow, and I'm okay with, with closing this out. Like I said, I think what we're seeing right now is the negative side of entering in um, your entire position and then not being able to close out half. I would have loved, absolutely loved to close. If I would have gotten to two contracts, I would have loved to close out of one contract here. And then I would have already been in a risk-free trade. So I really wish I would have gotten to two contracts and closed off one. Um, that sucks because like I said, when you choose to close, when you're only in one contract, um, especially like this, you, when you close your trade, you close 100% of it. There's no scaling in and scaling out. That's why I love micros and my number one market to trade is the NASDAQ. And I love trading micros and multiple contracts on the NASDAQ. 
so that I could close out partial and then leave one on as a runner for this exact situation, right? When micro unique, I mean, it's not up to us guys. I mean, it's, I mean, as of right now there, I have not seen or heard of micros on the Nikkei. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I was just, that was a pure example of how thin the order book is on the Nikkei and I was not spoofing the markets. Let's make sure that you guys understand and let's make sure that that's clear, right? Everyone knows that <laughs> spoofing is illegal. Um, have you heard when the top step will have one to 10 micros? I haven't heard exactly when, but there is a area on top step X where we can all upvote it and suggest it. Uh, that's one of the higher priorities on the waiting list. It's definitely one of those where I think it's going to be sooner rather than later. I, I don't know the exact timelines. Um, I, I would always recommend if you do have a suggestion like that, I, a lot of traders are wanting that. And it seems like it's one of the higher things on the priority list. Um, when is Top Step X expected to be released? Um, there is no exact release date, but when I watch Top Step TV in the morning, I do know that MP mentioned that it's going. it might be like maybe June. Um, MP mentioned it. Like I said, I don't think that there's, there is no official release date yet. Let's just make sure I get that clear. Um, I do not have an official release date on Top Step X, but I have heard on Top Step TV that it could possibly be June or sometime um, sooner rather than later. I would suggest, you know, that I love watching Top Step TV. I seem to get all my news um, on what's going on behind the scenes from Top Step TV first. Um, James Hill, Hoke said this month, I think. MP said this month. So that, yeah, there you go, guys. Um, you guys know um, in, on Top Step TV, you, you typically find out really soon on Top Step um, TV. I watch it. That's where I get all of my information. I follow Top Step's Instagram page. They post stuff there as well. Um, and then the last thing is I'll get updates, of course, right before my class on what, you know, what's going on, what happened during the Top Step TV daytime show, just in case I missed it. So I could be caught up and up to date so I could hopefully be able to answer your guys' questions. Um, Tessie, I took the Nikkei trade with three lots. I took out, I took two out, making about 570 in profit. Should I leave one as a runner overnight? This is my first Nikkei trade. Well, first of all, great trade. Um, it sounds like you got into multiple positions and you were able to close out two for profit. Um, if this is your first Nikkei trade, I mean, it, follow your strategy, right? I, I never want to suggest how you trade. However, I, I talked about how I typically trade. I, I like to make sure I am, um, if I do get into multiple positions, um, for example, close out, close out one or two, and then I leave one as a runner and try and trail it. Um, that being your first Nikkei trade, maybe you just see profit, take profit, be happy with that profit and a winner, right? I mean, it's really up to you. I will always suggest follow whatever rules you are, even if I was not here, right? Because if I decide like, hey, I'm sick, I'm not feeling good, or if something was to happen to me and you, there's no longer any slow markets class, um, you should be just as good of a trader. Will Top Step allow more than three active accounts soon? TK, I have one live account and three XFAs. Um, and I, I believe I also heard MP mention that that is something that he was talking about. Um, I even mentioned it during um, Power Hour the other day. MP asked me that question. Um, I woke up yesterday and MP asked me, what's my thoughts on you know trade copying? And I know there's been some conversation about having Top Step X allow 10 XFAs. And, and I told him my opinion. Uh, I said, you know, trade copying is a double-edged sword. 
Um, I, I think it's more be beneficial for the for the psyche of a trader. Um, for example, if I make two hundred dollars and if it's copied between ten accounts, you've made two thousand um, dollars compared to doing the same thing on a single account. This is the exact same thing I'm going through in my live account, guys. Um, you guys heard Mick opened me up to a daily loss limit of 9,000 and max 30 contracts. I'm trading my one live account the exact same way as if I was copy trading three express funded accounts. So instead of entering just one contract and having my contracts be like either one max, my biggest position is three contracts and copy trade three XFAs, which is three to six or nine contracts, right? So it's it's basic math and it's basic scaling. Um, my max position on one account is one to three contracts, okay? Um, when I copy amongst three XFAs, that one to three is multiplied by three. And so I'm actually trading three to nine contracts, okay? So I had a conversation with Mick. And I said, hey, let, Mick, let's go ahead and try and scale my live account um, here on Top Step and see if I could walk through the traders and explain what I'm doing. And he's like, okay, let's, what are we, what are we talking about? I said, let's, let's treat my live account like I am copy trading three express funded accounts. To show you guys, you do not need to copy trade. You could do the same thing on a live account. The risk is exactly the same. You're not spreading the risk, right? You're not lowering your risk. Um, you still have a daily loss limit of 9,000 in three accounts or 9,000 in one account, right? Um, my max contracts is 30, even though on, when you're copy trading on a 150K, it's actually 45 contracts. Um, I'm fine with the lower contract size and I've been doing good, right? So instead of just placing a trade for one contract, I'm actually doing three contracts at a time. So my first entry, three contracts. Second, three contracts. Third, three contracts. So my total is nine contracts on the higher end and three contracts on the lower end. So I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, so I, I think that answers it. Jefferson, disagreeing completely. Well, what do you disagree with? Dakota, let's get OT for the second time. What's OT? Oh, wow. It's already 8 p.m., guys. It is already 8 p.m. I want to just do one more. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sticking with Top Step, Bernie. I, I love Top Step. I love the people behind it and, and the way that the company is in, in terms of the structure and that it's focused um, on helping traders and it's built by traders for traders. It really is. Um, there, there's just nowhere else like this, but yeah, I want to answer that question. Um, where is it? Wherever you asked it, who's ever completely disagreeing. Are you complete? Yeah. Jefferson disagreeing completely. Explain what you mean, because like I said, I, I want to make sure I answer this because this is a very important, right? Richard Harris, I don't understand how you don't spread risk with a copy trader. So here's why you're not technically spreading the risk, okay? With a copy trader. If you have three 150K XFAs, when you hit your daily loss limit, you are still losing $9,000. Okay. If you are like me, I have my one live account. We've opened that up to a daily loss limit of $9,000. If I hit my daily loss limit in my live account, I still lose $9,000. Um, so in that aspect, it's exactly the same. So it's technically not spreading your risk. Um, if anything, Copy trading increases your risk because you're just multiplying um, and magnifying your trading profits and your losses. Um, yeah, math, it's the same stuff. <laughs> so it just depends, right? It depends on what your risk parameters are. It depends on what how big you're trading. 
And to me, the, the only benefit I see for copy trading is the psychological part for us as traders. Instead of seeing a daily loss limit of $9,000 on one account, minus 9,000, that hurts mentally, right? You only see minus 3,000. And then you're like, oh, okay, 3,000, that's not that bad. I could make that up tomorrow or next week, right? But then if you realize it's copy trade amongst three XFAs, it's 9,000. And it's the same when, in, when you're in the middle of a trade. You see the PL flashing, you know, up 100, down 200, up 300, down 300, versus seeing the whole total PL for the, you know, copy trading 10 combines, you know, up 2,000, down 3,000, 2,000. It, it's a mental thing for traders. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. I've been ranting for a little bit, um, but it's basic math. The The advantage of copy trading is the mental side of things. Um, or you guys could see my platform. You could just change your P&L to ticks, right? Or percentages or something else. You don't have to look at the dollar amount. That's what I, I like to do. I like to just think of this like, hey, you know what? If I was copy trading, divide that by three, I'm only up $312. So. Okay, guys, I think that's it. I'm going to go get me some dinner. We went a little bit over, but that is fine. I, I think I covered some important things. Um, answered some great questions. This is a trade I am going to leave overnight. Um, so like I said, I promised you guys, I'm going to leave this trade overnight. I'm going to turn my computer off. I'm actually just going to get out. Um, you know what? I'm going to put my take profit here. My take profit is going to be 39,475. Um, I'm going to keep my stop loss at 270. As soon as I get off, I'm going to completely turn down my computer. This is how I'm going to leave this trade. Worst case scenario, I lose. Um, actually, I'm going to move my stop loss there. Worst case scenario, I lose $25. Best case scenario, I make, what is this? 1500 bucks. So I'm going to leave this running. I'm perfectly fine with it. So. Good night, guys, and I will see you guys tomorrow, and I believe it will be tomorrow during Power Hour. Let me confirm before I just turn off this. If you're late, that's too bad. Um, this is recording. Yep, so tomorrow during, not Power Hour, um, during whatever they want to call it, Coach's Takeover. So, okay, guys, take care, and I will see you tomorrow.